Hello, thank you for purchasing the project tracking overview document. This is a document that is going to be really helpful if you are tracking a large project with multiple phases. So if you are, you're in the right place. And what I'm gonna be doing today is just demoing the Google Sheets version of the project tracker. Um, there's also an Excel version that's available with your uh, purchase on Etsy. So uh, feel free to use the Excel version as well. All the functionality and features that I walk through in the Google Sheets version is also going to be available in Excel as well. And if you're new here, and have not uh, purchased the project tracker, I'm going to have a link to the tracker on Etsy. So feel free to purchase and then go ahead and follow along here as well. So let's jump in. The first area that we are going to be focusing on is this first tab that you are going to see as soon as you open up the file. It's called the project tracking overview. This tab right here is really meant to just be a snapshot of your project. And you're actually going to start with this tab before any other tab because a lot of the other tabs feed the information um, from this sheet right here. So what you're going to do is starting at the top, feel free to rename this if you want to uh, type something else in there, but you can also um, add in your project title your project manager, company name, um, the percent complete, that's going to automatically calculate for you as you populate some of the information below. Today's date is gonna automatically calculate for you, but the due date is going to be something that you need to fill in. So this is going to be the final due date of the entire project. Um, you can go ahead and put that in there. The days left to complete is going to automatically calculate for you as well based on today's date and the due date. Um, and then down here to the, the heart of the, the overview sheet is going to be different phases of the project. So what's, what's really nice is there's five different phases built into the project tracker. Um, and what you're gonna be able to do is customize each of the phase names and then customize each of the tasks that you need to complete in each phase. So for this, for example, um, feel free to come in and rename this. I'm just gonna re rename it to example one, um, just for demo purposes. And then I'm going to rename the first task to task one, two, three, and four, just to show you how everything else pulls from this sheet. The next is going to be this column right here. So the status you can put you know, on hold, not started yet, in progress or complete, and feel free to up, update those as you go throughout um, throughout your project. And then you also have this priority tab of low, medium, and then high as well. And everything's color coordinated, so when you come in here, you can see what's high priority and not started yet, or vice versa. So basically, if everything's red, probably go ahead and do that one first. Um, the next columns are gonna be your start and your due date. So you can go in and put in start and due dates for every single task. Um, typically, when one task ends, the next, the next task starts. However, there are some teams that are working on multiple tasks in a project phase at the same time, and that's okay too. Up here though, for each project phase, you can put an overall start and due date for the phase itself. Um, so here you're gonna wanna put the earliest start date, and then um, in the due date, you're gonna wanna put the latest due date of any of your tasks. This column days automatically calculates all the way down the line for you. And then here, if you're working with a team of multiple different people, you can come in here and put different names. So maybe Sue Stevens, Mark Stevens, <laughs> Jim Stevens. You're working with a whole Stevens family at this point. Um, but you can come in and put in their different names. Then you can also come in and put different descriptions or notes that you have for each task. If your notes are a little bit longer than this, feel free to extend the width of the column um, right up here by doing that. And then over here, you can just track the percent complete for each task. So since this one's on hold, it's actually prob probably gonna be zero, not 100. Since this one's not yet started, um, that's also going to be zero in progress. Maybe you're at 68%. And then since this one is complete, you can come in and put 100. And then this, if you have expenses associated with each task, uh, you can go ahead and calculate that. You can go ahead and calculate estimated hours and actual hours if that would be beneficial for your team as well. And then this last column is going to be days left to complete. Um, that'll automatically calculate for you too. So you're gonna to wanna to basically repeat what we just did for all of the different project phases. You can rename them um, and you can add in your different tasks there. So once this entire sheet is complete, then you can start jumping into the Gantt charts. So if you click on the second tab at the bottom, this is gonna be the first version of the Gantt chart. There's two versions. The first version is going to be a streamlined condensed version. And then the second version is going to be a more robust version that pulls in more details from the project overview. So to start, we're to start with version one. Um, one thing I will say is noting at the top, um, you can still add in your project title, project manager, company name. But the one thing that's gonna be different on this sheet that will not pull in from your other sheet is going to be this project start date. 
this is going to be, um, it should be the earliest date on the entire project. So all of your tasks should be later or the same day as this project start date. That's really important because if for whatever reason the project start date is later than one of your uh, tasks down here, the Gantt chart isn't going to function correctly. Um, so here you're going to see that some of these, the information already pulled in, example one <laughs> for the project phase pulled in, our task names, our start and end dates, and the days calculated all pulled in from the overview tab. So no need to repopulate anything. Um, up here, you're going to see the project week. This is going to show you um, which week you are currently on. But if you want to look at future weeks, so say you're on week three of the project, you can change the project week to three, and you can see the Gantt chart updated to that project week as well, which is really nice. So for this sake, I'll keep it on one. This days left to complete is still gonna be pulling from that first sheet, so nothing to do there. And then the Gantt version two is going to be all the same functionality and features that we just looked at, but you're gonna see a couple other fields pulled in. Um, you're gonna see that the task owner names pulled in, and then this percentage task complete pulled in as well. Um, these percentages automatically change in color. If it's 100%, it's gonna be all green. If it's um, partially complete, it's going to be a lighter shade of green. Again, just for that visual representation. Um, you are gonna to wanna to make sure that this project start date, again, is the same thing. It will pull from the Gantt version one, but in case you didn't populate it there and you're just using this sheet, make sure that this is pulled in. Um, and then down here as well, you can also put in uh, task numbers. This is sometimes helpful for a team in case a couple of your tasks are actually related to one another. You can put them in there like this um, to make sure that they're kind of grouped together. Some teams use it and some teams you know, choose to not populate that column. One thing before I move on to the to-do list, one thing I do want to make note of is what to do if you would like to add another row. So say for this first project phase, you actually have more than four tasks and you want to be able to add in multiple more uh, rows. You're going to come here and this is really important. You're going to click on the very last last task <laughs> in the project phase. You're going to right click with your mouse and you're going to select insert one row above. The reason for that is we don't want to insert a row below. We always want to be inserting a row above the last row in the project phase. And say for this sake, we want to insert maybe three rows. So you would just duplicate that and hit insert one row above. Then what you're going to do is you are going to highlight uh, B14 and you're going to drag your mouse all the way across to M14 just to basically highlight this entire row. And then at that little corner where you see the dot, you're going to hover over that so this cross appears, this plus sign, and you're going to pull that all the way down to basically copy all of your tasks down here. And in this case, I'm going to rename this to task seven, just for example's sake. Um, but you'll see all of the features and the colors and the functionality and the formatting, it all duplicated, which is really, really important um, because then all the formula formulas that are working behind the scenes um, were pulled in correctly, which is great. And you can come in here and still change all of these and you can rename them to whatever you would like. But what's, what's also really important is now you're going to do the same thing on the Gantt version one. So you're going to come in here to where it's the last task in this project phase and you are going to right click and click insert one row above. And since we inserted three rows, you're going to do that two more times. And then you're going to do the same thing. So you're actually going to highlight all of this task three all the way over to the days. And you're just going to drag down and it'll automatically pull in all of that information from your project overview sheet and it won't mess up anything else on your sheet, which is great. And then just be sure to repeat that for your Gantt version two, if that's the preferred view. So again, you're going to come into that very last, last task in the project phase one. You're going to right click and say insert one row above. We're going to do that two more times because we added three rows. And then we're just going to highlight all the way across here and drag down. And that's going to pull in everything from that first um, that project overview, that first tab in your sheet. So that's a really easy way. You can also do that, you know, say you have additional tasks down here in project phase two, you can do that as well, or any of your additional phases. You can just go in here and insert one row above um, to the, the very last task in your sheet. So jumping down to the to-do list, that's going to be the next tab after the Gantt charts. This is just a really nice view to be able to basically have a daily to-do list. You can jot down, um, just different things that you have to do that day. And then once you complete them, you can go ahead and check it off. 
And then this number up here is going to automatically change to the number of tasks that you have completed, which is great. The next tab down here is going to be the team member daily and weekly schedule. This is a really good view if you want to see um, basically what your week looks like in colors and blocked off. Um, so what you're going to be able to do is start up here with the week of. If you work in a corporation that's open from Monday to Friday, I recommend that this week of the date that you choose there is a Monday because then it's going to populate um, a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If you choose a different day of the week instead, like a Tuesday, um, then it would be Tuesday through Saturday. So I typically recommend that people do a Monday if they, if they work a Monday through Friday. But what you're gonna be able to do is you can come in here and just use each of these 30 minute blocks. So maybe you have you know, a couple meetings, or maybe you have um, a larger meeting and you wanna be able to block off a couple of the blocks then you would be able to come in here and select with your mouse how many rows um, you think. So maybe you have a meeting from 9 to 1030. You can come in here and then at the top, you're going to see this little button that says Merge Cells. You would click that and then you would be able to type in here. So then meet with Sue. And then if you want to start changing some of the colors in here, you can select um, the row or rows that you want to change. You can click the little paint uh, bucket up here, and then you can select the color that you would like to change that to as well. The next tab down here is going to be the team members tab. This is a great place to just add in different team members you are working with on the project, um, team managers, and then also project vendors. This is a really nice place just to keep all of their contact information, their project role, everything in one place, as opposed to looking in a lot of different places. The next tab is going to be the calendar. Um, right now, this is a 2023 calendar, and this is a really nice visual for your team. You can either print this for your team and hang it up in your office, or you can actually come in here if you want to use the digital version. You can come in here and mark your deadlines. I've seen people, you know, bold their deadlines and be able to come in here and, you know, maybe change some of these settings. So maybe change the background to the fill color to white the text to black and bold it. And it, this is just a really good visual representation of large deadlines for the project. Um, and then again, this, if they need more details about what's due on the 15th, you can hop back to that project overview tab and view everything there. And then the last tab in the sheet is your expense report. This is a great way if you are tracking expenses for individual tasks or project phases and you want to be able to send a report either to your accounting team or to your vendors themselves, you can come in here and you can add in the category, the description, any notes for the expense, and then you would just come in here and put the amounts. The bottom automatically totals based on all of your um, expenses that you enter, and you can print, sign, and date it or do it all digitally right here as well. So that is an overview of how to use the project tracker. Again, for everyone who's already purchased, uh, thank you so much for supporting my business. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, but I wanted to put this video together because it's all encompassing for how uh, businesses use this. And for those of you who were watching along and this, this might be helpful for you, feel free to check out the, the link in my profile here to grab um, the project tracker from my Etsy business. So thank you all and see you in the next video.